Hello, my name is Mission Coffee, and today I'll be discussing the landmark, the landmark case, Road vs. Wade, and the woman behind the Road vs. Wade case as well. So in 1972, Jane Roe filed a lawsuit claiming that the Texas law in criminalizing most abortions violated her constitutional rights, claiming that abortion lies within the woman's right to choose whether or not to have an abortion. The law banned all abortions except for in the case of incest or in the case that she may lose her life, the mother losing her life, or rape. The court argued that the woman's decision for an abortion is protected by the 14th Amendment, which is a broad, broad enough spectrum for a woman to decide whether to keep or terminate a pregnancy. Roe claimed that while her life was not in any danger, to terminate her pregnancy, she should be able to do it in a safe envi medical environment without it being a crime. And then after a year of debating this, in 1973, the Roe v. Wade case decide decision was ruled unconstitutional for any state to ban abortions and it gave women total independence to decide to terminate pregnancy within the first trimester. Roe v. Wade remains one of the most intensely debated Supreme Court decision. No other case is disputed in an individual's ethics, religion, and biology, and then defiantly uh, ruled against them all. Um, so the laws of 46 states were reformed by the court's ruling and declared a pregnant woman is entitled to have an abortion until the end of the first trimester of pregnancy without any interference by the state. And um, for those sites I did use, uh, Roe versus Wade, the Orzo.org um, website, the PBS.org, um, and then the Legal Dictionary.com for Road versus Wade on the case, and then also the woman behind, which was um, Jane Roe at the time. Um, the actual woman behind that, though, is um, Norma McCorvey, and she never actually wanted an abortion. She was seeking. Um, from the attorney she had went to divorce from her husband, um, but thinking on the topic of having her baby. Um, a pro-abortion feminist attorney, Sarah Wellington and Linda Coffey, used McCorvey's case as a means to attempt to overturn the Texas lawmaking. Most abortion was illegal at this time. Um, they both took this case all the way to the Supreme Court, um, which obviously invalidated every pro-life state law protecting unborn children and the rest, you know, is history with that. Most Americans don't know that McCorvey was the, who was pro-choice at the time on abortion, um, is now a pro-life advocate. She's de dedicating her time to reversing the Supreme Court case that bears her fictionist name, um, Jane vs. Road. Um, there's a video she put out that's 60 seconds long. McCorvick explains her effort to obtain legal abortion in the 1970s when facing, when facing an unplanned pregnancy. Um, she had never had an abortion and now realizes that her court case was the bi biggest mistake of her life and currently fights to stop abortion right now. Um, I'm going to quote her right now. Back in 1973, I was a very confused 21-year-old with one child and facing an unplanned pregnancy of another. At the time, I fought to obtain legal abortion, but truth be told, I had three daughters and had never had an abortion. Um, I think it's safe to say that the entire abortion industry is based on a lie. I have dedicated to spending the rest of my time undoing the law that bears my name. And then she goes on to talk about how at this time she was doing it for the Obamacare, which pretty much legalizes women using the funds they get to um, terminate pregnancy in that manner, using abortion. Um, and abortion comes in very many different how they do it and stuff like that. It, it comes in different ways of doing it. Um, and it refers to the premature, the premature expulsion of a human fetus, whether naturally done or um, by miscarriage or artificially induced. Um, 93% of all induced abortions are done electively and not medically reasons such as um, a woman's life's in danger or um, as a miscarriage as well. 
Uh, abortion pretty much ends pregnancy by destroying and removing of the fetus. Um, but the child's heart rate has already begun to beat by the time the mother misses her first period. Um, that's 31 days after the last period. Um, surgical abortions are usually not performed before 7 weeks or 49 days. By that time the baby has identifiable arms and legs at 45 days. Um, and there are brain, brain waves by 40 days. During the 7th through 10 weeks, the majority of abortions are performed. Um, by then, the fingers and genitalia appear and the child actually has a human face. Um, there are many techniques. Um, some of them are pretty gruesome. I don't want to go too into detail with that, but they are factual and are used commonly um, in the U.S. Um, there are surgical ones where they suction the baby out. There's also um, scraping the baby out by using a utensil that goes in. It's much more invasive and it does cause um, where you may or may not have a baby later on if you were trying again and you know you were going that route. Um, there's a chemical one using the RU486. Uh, that is a drug that's pretty much um, needle poked in. There's one of the ones that go in through there as well. They poke it in and um, insert some kind of a liquid, basically taking out some of the placenta, putting in salts so the baby is poisoned by that. Um, and then there's also a pill that's called, it's a three day pill. You take one um, and then 48 hours later you come back for another one and it, so forth and so on until they're administered that way. Um, there are also, um, the farther and farther along you get as far as trimester, then they have to do more doses of more potent drugs. And like I said, this is all factual and it's completely um, on the uh, nrlc.org abortion medical facts techniques. And it goes in to talk about um, as old as 24 weeks, um, people are still allowing abortions to happen at this time. and. Um, just much more getting involved with that is just, you know, getting inside there, doing the same type of thing, just as the baby is getting bigger and bigger. So it goes in and there's still, like I said, they, they go up all the way to the third trimester if that's how far the female wants to take it. Um, most will decline after that, but there are some that will take extra money to do that. And there's been many cases of um, doctors arrested because of this fact. Uh, one recently was a gentleman that was 72 years old, uh, Kermit McMiller or something like that. I don't remember his name specifically. Um, December of last year, he was arrested. Um, he had been giving from 2008 to 2010 uh, women pills to ingest and then basically um, kill the fetus. Um, and he was charging $150 to do that. So they got him on 30 years of life, and then he also had three um, fetuses that were coming out, and he um, pretty much killed them, but in a certain manner. I won't get into it, it's a little gruesome, but uh, yeah, it's just not a good way for anything to happen like that, and um, it should be banned, you know. But these are factual items that are on any website you go to look at. Just type in abortions and you'll find lots of facts on there. So for my visual aid, I'm going to show you my precious cargo that I definitely would not do an abortion for. So here's my little girl, Grayson Athena Rita Drolet. She was born last year and she is the light of my life and my favorite little girl. So thank you for listening and have a good day. Bye.